So you want to bet on golf, but you don't know how. What's up, everybody? Ben Raza here for Odd Shopper, and we are back talking all things PGA betting. If you are getting into golf for the first time, this is going to be a quick and easy breakdown of all the bet types that are out there. When you're betting the NBA, when you're betting the NFL, you're looking at two teams, you see a point spread, you're going to pick a winner. In the PGA streets, it is not like that. You've got hundreds of guys, dozens of options, and if you aren't familiar with them, it can be very overwhelming. So what we're going to do here, we're going to break them down. We're going to talk about how to get an edge on the books and hopefully make some money. If you're hopping in for the first time, welcome aboard. Hit that like button and join the channel. Hit subscribe. We'd love you as part of the community. Let's dive into some of the most common offerings you are going to see when betting PGA golf. The first one is called the outright market. And what that basically means is pick a winner. Got 150 guys in the tournament. All of them will have odds to actually hoist the trophy at the end. If you pick it, you're going to make a lot of money because that's very difficult to do. But it's one of the easiest bets to understand. One guy wins every golf tournament. You have to pick him. If your guy comes in second, if your guy misses the cut, if your guy gets disqualified, you lose. It doesn't matter. You are looking for first place or you're a loser. It is an outright. It's the most simple type of bet. It's the hardest bet to hit. But if you do hit one, it could pay for the whole season. Uh, you're going to see guys north of 100 to 1 each and every week. And some of them do end up winning tournaments. It is definitely one of the best and most common bets that you will find. Now, if you want to cash a ticket a little more often, you will see the top five market the top 10 market, the top 20 market. And it is what it sounds like. This is my guy has to finish inside that number. So if you bet a top 10 on, say, we're going to go with John Rahm, if he finishes inside that top 10, whether it's first, second, ninth, you will be cashing that ticket. Now, if he comes in 10th and it's tied, there is a chance that you will get your, your payout chopped. Uh, that's a very common question. Say 13 guys finish in the T10 you're not going to get the full payout, but you still will cash the ticket. So that's just a small, small thing. But when you're looking at the top markets, it's just the number and you need to finish inside of it. The more aggressive you get, the harder it is to cash, but the odds are going to reflect that. Naturally, a guy's top 20 odds are a lot better than a guy's top 10 odds and, and et cetera, because he has 20 chances to get inside there and the best players in the world. Most of them are finishing inside the top 20 at a pretty good clip. So that is a way to get more exposure to possibly cashing your ticket, but you are sacrificing some upside. The bets that we've talked about so far, whether it be outrights or top fives or top tens and things like that, all of them to me are more on the aggressive side. You have a low chance to cash the ticket, but when you do, you're going to get, you know, five to one, 10 to one, 50 to one type payouts. There is another type of bet in PGA that's very common, and it actually takes a page out of the main sports, it's a matchup. It's a matchups. It's kind of like betting on, you know, the NFL or the NBA. And what it is, it takes two golfers, sometimes more, and we can get into that a little bit, but I'm just going to stick with two for the purposes of this video. And it pairs them up either in an individual round that's going to call the round matchup. That's only 18 holes. Got to beat them in that round or a tournament matchup. That's over the full course of the tournament, whether you guys... Get, get cut, that would be after 36 holes, or they make it all the way through for 72 holes. And what, what this is, is a very simple bet. It's one-on-one. -on -one. So it doesn't really matter where your guy finishes. He just has to beat whoever he is listed against. So again, I'm going to just go to an example here. Say say a golfer like John Rahm, he's taking on in the matchup another elite player. We'll use Rory McIlroy. And, and the books will give a line. You know, someone like John Rahm is a favorite. If you pick him, he has to beat Rory. Uh, simple as that. Now, if it's in an individual round, it's only the results after that 18 holes. If it's after a full tournament, it's where they finish at the end of the tournament. Now, one of the most common questions I get, and I'm sure some of you are going to be thinking this, and hopefully this answers it, what happens if my golfer gets cut? If your golfer gets cut, you lose unless the other guy gets cut, and then it just goes down to the scorecard. So if your guy finishes plus four, and the other guy finishes plus six and you're both cut, you would actually win that tournament matchup or head-to-head -head matchup regardless of him being cut. Now, if your guy makes the cut and the other guy misses the cut, no matter what happens, you will win it. If one guy is cut and the other is not, 
that guy who has been eliminated after 36 holes will not cash the ticket. He's out. It doesn't matter what you shoot on the weekend. That is something to keep in mind. One other thing, and this is kind of an overarching theme for this video. What happens if your golfer doesn't tee off? He withdraws before the tournament. That's a void. It doesn't matter. No harm, no foul. You will get your money back. If he hits one shot, you're out of luck. That's a loser, whether it's a matchup, an outright, a top 5, 10, or 20. If he is on the course and hits a shot, your bet counts, and you will not be cashing that ticket. But if he doesn't ever end up teeing off, you'll be fine. You just get your money back. We've talked about outrights. We've talked about top 5s, 10s, and 20s. And we've talked about matchups. One more type of bet, and to me, this is the most fun and most profitable long shot type bet. It's the first round leader market. What this is, day one, Thursday, PGA, pick the first round leader. Who will be leading after just that 18 holes? This is not who wins the tournament. This is not who's in first after 36 holes. Who is leading after the first day? So all you're looking at, same field, same opportunities as the outright market. But again, this is just for the first day. And the odds will be correlated. That's something that I think is very important. And when we talk about our tips and tricks in a second, that's something you can take advantage of. The first round leader market and the outrights kind of shadow each other because the best players in the world are most likely the guys that you're going to see at the top of the leaderboard even after one specific round. But I do think there are some advantages that you can keep in mind there. But for the purposes of describing the bet type, it's very, very simple. First round leader, you need to pick the guy that is actually leading after the first day, if there are multiple players tied at the top, you will get your payment chopped, but you will cash your ticket. It's just like any top five, 10 or 20 that has, you know, extra guys in there. If three guys are leading after the first day, if you have any of them, you'll get one third. Uh, and that's could be a very profitable ticket. So we've kind of run through these bet types. Some are very simplistic, others a little more complicated, but equally important is, are there some simple tricks simple strategies that we can use when making these bets. I will say on this very channel each week, you can find me and Aton Shanders PGA videos where we break down the field of that given tournament. You can see how we're breaking down our cards. You can see the edges that are unveiled when we look at the odds. But generally, let's talk about some of these strategies. One of the most important things in PGA, the weather. I'm not a meteorologist. I don't know anything about the weather, but we have to pay attention because tea times, they're all throughout the day. And when you look, some guys could be playing in the wind. Other guys could be playing in the rain. Other guys could be playing in the sunshine. That's a huge advantage if you draw the right tea time. And that is something for first round leaders. It's a massive edge when we're talking about just 18 holes. If you look and you say, wow, it's going to be extremely windy in the second half of the draw. To me, you could eliminate half the field from your first round leader potentials. And now you're looking at only some of the pairings and some of the tee times that could be potential first round leader candidates. That is something that you absolutely have to take advantage of. The books will shade it a little bit to the mornings generally because your weather conditions are better. It's not as windy. The, the greens are more, you know, they're pure. They haven't been walked on, but not enough in my opinion. If you find that there is a weather edge it is something you absolutely want to take advantage of on a first round leader market and something that you need to look at. Tea times are another one. It's very correlated to the weather as well. You want to see where guys are playing, who they're playing with. Is it going to be freezing in the morning? If you have to go out first, you could really catch some unlucky streaks and things of that nature. And then of course, the big thing, and this is where we dive into it each and every week, what skill sets do we want to look at? Well, of course, if you're looking at outrights, you want to make sure that your player has some pedigree. He's a good ball striker, maybe a, a guy that's familiar with the track, the layout, the grass type. All of these strategies are things that we can use in the PGA streets. But keeping it very simple, things that you want to look at immediately, look at the weather, look at the course, and try to conceptually grasp, okay, where are these guys teeing off and who is a possible candidate? You can start to eliminate guys that basically have no chance guys that are in the wrong end of the draw, and guys that are just playing absolutely horrible. Once you do that, you will quickly realize that, wow, there's not that many players. It's still very difficult to cash these tickets, but 40 to 1, 80 to 1, 100 to 1 type players, 
you only need to cash a couple of them a year. And I absolutely believe that you can do that just by looking at the weather splits and things of that nature. So we've talked about outrights, top 10s, top 20s, matchups, first round leaders, and some of the tricks and tips that you can get in the PGA streets. Again, I just want to say a quick shout out to this very channel. If you're enjoying this type of content, we're going to have it for every sport. All these strategy videos, hit subscribe if you don't want to miss them. And of course, stay tuned for even more PGA content here at Odd Shopper. Good luck, and we will talk to you soon.